Hello, this is Alex, and this is a complete guide to sturgeon fishing in 2024 in San Francisco Bay Area. Now, I run Sweeney Sports, which is a sporting goods shop in Napa, and I also run uh, a website called catchhappy.co where you can book a fishing guide. Now, if you're a guide, you can go log in and send me a quick note and get you signed up on the catchhappy.co, no cost to the guide at all. Now, speaking of guides, this video is not for guides. It's not for the grizzled veterans who fish sturgeon weekly. This is for beginners and people who are looking to be to potentially return to the sport of sturgeon fishing. I'm going to cover today. I'm going to cover season uh, specifics. I'm going to talk a little bit about the fish. I'm going to talk about the fishing methods. I'm going to talk about some regulations that very recently just came out. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, bank fishing versus boat fishing tactics. And I'm also going to give you some advice. Uh, I'm going to talk about some setups I've prepared for you. This is very visual. Uh, I hope you stick around. And by the end of this video, you should know how and where to fish for sturgeon. Let's get into it. Oh, 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 oh! Fish! 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 So let's talk about the seasons first. Um, this typical season for fishing, sport fishing for white sturgeon is from about January, goes all the way through the end of March. They're coming into San Francisco Bay Estuary, uh, San Joaquin, San Joaquin, uh, Sacramento Rivers, Napa River, uh, Sassoon Bay. They're coming in from the ocean to do a few things. Number one, to, to feed and to spawn and also to winter sometimes in the rivers and the sloughs of the rivers. So you can find them all over the river system. Um, the way sturgeon uh, feed themselves isn't the same as say halibut or, or striper. They're not predatory fish. They have a sucker mouth right on the bottom. And so their favorite meal are shrimp, um, crustaceans, and potentially some fish eggs like salmon eggs and stuff like that. So they're scavenging around. Now, this fish also grows to anywhere between 10 to you know 80 pounds. And typical catch, um, you'll probably get somewhere between 15 and 40 pounds. That's what I've seen most common. Now I caught a 60 pounder last year, but I was a little bit of an outlier. The way to fish for them is also a little bit different than let's say your typical bass where you use lures or trawling or anything like that for trout. Um, these are uh, scavenger fish, so to speak. Uh, they're not exactly like carp, because carp is more vegetation feeding, but um, sturgeon uh, like those crustaceans and the shrimp, as I mentioned, and so they're just sort of stuck to the bottom and, 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 and sort of using their sucker mouth to vacuum in the bait that they prefer, and that's how they feed themselves. Now, fishing for them, therefore, isn't based on lures or casting or anything like that. It's bait fishing. It's essentially, once you have your setup completed, you cast it out there, you put it in the rod holder or balance beam, and you sit there, wait for the bite. Now, this kind of fishing is definitely attractive to me because I really enjoy either a company of somebody I'm with, I'm listening to a book, I'm reading something, I'm on my phone working, something like that. Or I'm just enjoying nature, the quiet, the birds, the beautiful crisp, winter mornings or afternoons. That's the best times to fish for them. And so that's the type of fishing, if it's not for you, if you like the active stuff, then maybe sturgeon isn't your ticket. But for the rest of us, this is incredibly enjoyable kind of fishing. Another thing about fishing for sturgeon is you have to put in your time. I've been told this a million times, and it is true. Um, maybe on an average of, I don't know, five trips, where you put in four, five, seven hours fishing, you get three bites in one fish. That's kind of what I've seen. That's the average. That's very broad. I know there are exceptions. You can get them on your first trip, but typically just expect to have a relaxing, really enjoyable time, calm time when you're fishing for sturgeon. But this calm can be interrupted very quickly with a massive fight when you get a monster on the other end of your fishing line. All right, next we're going to talk about regulations. Now, 
I have my cheat sheet here because there's a lot of things and I don't want to miss any of them. But by no means this is definitive regs uh, video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you exactly what we tell our customers as well as what I found being a uh, fish and wildlife dealer at Sweeney Sports. And from here on, it's your responsibility to make sure you follow all the regulations. But the more common ones that you need to be aware of, number one, you're fishing with a single hook and it's a barbless hook. Okay, there's no barb on a hook. Um, also, you can't snag a sturgeon. So you can't troll something, snag a sturgeon and keep them. That's against the rules, uh, against the law, I should say. Now, if you are one of those people who want to harvest and eat a sturgeon, nothing against that, but it has to be within 42 to 48 inches at the fork. Everything below that in size and above that in size needs to be released. In fact, any sturgeon over 68 inch is, needs to be not taken out of the water. You just need to look at them and let them go. Those are the rules. You can only keep one sturgeon per year starting in 2024 or the recent emergency regulations on the sturgeon. You can only keep one per year. Um, you also must have a fishing license, obviously, California fishing license, and you need to have your sturgeon report card, which last time I checked was $10.80. But it's essential that you keep that and actually use it. As soon as you pull the fish and you decide to keep them, you need to attach, you need to fill out your report card, cut it, and permanently attach it to your fish. Otherwise, you get big, big fines. I'm also going to touch on something less known, but also very important as far as regulations go. It's the the leader and the way you make the weight in uh, uh, in connection with the size of your leader. So your hook cannot be closer than 18 inches from a weight, okay? Um, it can be only in one condition that the weight is less than half ounce. So typically, and I'll show you this in a minute, we fish with sturgeon where there's current. And when there's current, you need heavier weight. So five to eight ounces weight, four to eight ounces weight, I should say. Though that cannot be closer than 18 inches to your actual hook. So keep that in mind, but I'll show you the leaders and I'll talk you through it uh, once we get into the baiting tactics and stuff like that. One last thing on regulations, green sturgeon are protected. They're absolutely a no-no. You can't even take them out of the water. So if you even suspect you've got a green sturgeon on a hook, which is rare, but it happens, uh, you gotta unhook them and let them go without taking them out of the water. So those are the rules and regulations. Now let's get into some fun. Next, let's talk about gear you need um, to fish for sturgeon. I have a couple examples here. I have a high end and I have a very low end. Both can be effective. So I'm gonna walk you through the rod and reel and line as a kind of first order of business. So let's talk about some of the nicer stuff you can get. This, is, this particular example is a Phoenix 808. It's a... Um, Phoenix is a really cool brand. It's about 219, I think, or $199, $200 rod, okay? And attached to it, as you can see here, is an Abbott reel. Now, sturgeon are very powerful. <laughs> I already caught something. Uh, very powerful fish, and but their bite is so um, subtle. Um, what you're looking for in a rod, and this, this particular rod represents it, is a thick backbone where you can actually fight them and potentially have a chance to win, but also a very soft tip. Um, when I say soft, it means flexible. So you can see even a little bit of that bite. That's very important. And so this particular rod ticks all those boxes. Now, reel-wise, this is a level drag Avid reel. You set your drag level by moving this lever. It's just really easy to use. It's super simple and very well made. This is about $300, I believe. Don't quote me on this, maybe $350. I know I work, I know I own a shop, but uh, I don't remember. I've had this set up for a long time and it's, it's served me really well. As far as mainline, you want to have a braid anywhere from 40 to 80 pounds. I really like to go on a lighter side because I just don't like fishing with the heavy gear, but uh, line, braid line doesn't really matter. It doesn't get much thicker between 40 and 80 pounds, but this one I think is like 60 pounds or 40 pounds actually on this one right here. And so that's your kind of a 
I wouldn't say top of the line, but this is the setup you'll spend $500 plus and you will love it. And you can actually use this thing for halibut fishing. You can use it for rock fishing. I have used it for rock fishing. You can use it for orca carp fishing. Now that's a fish. Let him run. Woo! Snake and line. Big, 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 big <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. That's carp on. fishing for you. I've caught a carp. You look, look at my channel, look at my videos. You'll see me catching giant carp with this. It's really fun. All right. Now let's talk about budget. All right. So if you don't have $500 to spend or you're just getting into it, you don't want to spend $500. That's fine. Uh, I have something for you as well. Now this particular one is a Daiwa. Akuma makes a similar model. This is a $40, $50 rod. It's a two piece. Same thing, kind of strong on the um, on the holding side on on this on this um, handle side, and then a little bit less flexible, but still, um, it's enough to see the bite. Um, I also have Avenger ABF 55 bait feeder reel on this thing. The drag on this is not as robust, so you might have a little bit of challenge, but size-wise, this reel would work. Um, this rod would work. This whole setup is just over, I think, maybe like $140, something like that, $120. And then you want to, again, put, uh, say, 40 to 60-pound braid on this setup and call that a day. And those are your rods and reels. You can go between 150 I think it's hard to go below that because that fish is powerful and you need you need some decent name brand gear um, and you go as, as high as a thousands of dollars what i showed you is something between 150 and 550. Okay. next let's cover the setup so what i have here is line running from the reel all the way to a bead okay, i'm gonna slow this down for you a bead and a swivel now this swivel is kind of old i'm not going to use this again look how rusted this is i want to get a new one for sure because i don't want to miss official lifetime because my rusted uh little swivel clip but uh here's the idea this is uh, again on a smaller side swivel um sliding sinker holder i should say um you want to get a bigger one which i have on the other setup but this is the idea you clip your weight here okay and it slides up and down and you clip your leader right on here. I'll show you that in a second. Now here's a typical sturgeon leader. This is probably a five aught or six aught hook. You have a metal leader that is fairly long. This is about, well, I don't know, two foot, uh, maybe a foot and a half, okay? That terminates with a swivel, which you can clip to the end of the rod, which I just showed you in a second, uh, second ago. Um, and some people, and me included, prefer to put a sliding sinker here on this leader just so it stays on the bottom. Because remember, the way sturgeon feed is they, they have a sucker mouth that just sucks in the bait and everything on the bottom as they go along. If your bait is floating up, you're going to miss that chance, okay? So you can put up to half an ounce of weight which is plenty enough um, on your leader to keep it down and in a strike range so here's an example of complete setup complete ready to fish setup setup you have your main line come into a sliding clip for weight this particular one is five ounce you can use one heavier or lighter depending on what you got going on you have a bead so it does not wear out line when it hits Every time you cast, it's gonna hit your swivel clip. So you wanna have that. Then you have a leader, which again, you can just purchase ready-made leader for sturgeon. You have a barbless hook, no barb on this one, you see that? And now you're ready to bait the hook. Let's talk about that. There's a few tricks I'm gonna show you that will multiply your chances to catch fish. I'm gonna talk to you about baiting this hook. This is critical because you're casting that bait out for 30 to 40 minutes, sometimes 20, depends. Um, and you wanna make sure your bait presentation is as good as it can be 
for best chance to hook the monster that we're talking about today, the sturgeon, the white sturgeon, okay? So step one, when you hook in your live bait, shrimp, um, there are different schools of thought, thought. The old school way of thinking, you just put little one little shrimp on it, you put it all the way in, okay? You grab your thread, magic thread, which you could buy anywhere in any fishing shop, and you wrap it securely around the hook. Now, what I like to do is something different. I like to actually put in multiple shrimp, or in, in my case, I caught my biggest sturgeon, check that out. I used pile worm combination with the, with the ghost shrimp. Now, I don't have a shrimp with me today, but you can imagine you just thread it to the shrimp. It's not that complicated, okay? And you make sure it's all the way to the shank of the hook, okay? Next thing I do is I use the magic thread to tighten the shrimp onto the hook. Then I will take my pile worm and thread them onto the hook as well. So now there's a ghost shrimp tied up and a pile, uh, pile worm penetrated in few spots so it's still kind of wiggling around but it's firmly on the hook next thing i'm going to do this is a little trick a lot of people don't know about or don't pay attention to this is bait buttons this is critical in my opinion this will increase your catch rate significantly so you take this little bait button okay it's just nothing but a little piece of silicone and then you put it onto the hook like so, to secure all of your bait right at the shank, leaving your business end exposed for business. Because when it's down on a river bottom, the fish is coming in, they're gonna start sucking in this and the hook is gonna penetrate into their lip. And this is how you get first the little nibbles on your rod and then essentially eventually once they get poked they bolt and they self hook that's the idea with the setup a bait button is going to help you execute it one of the most important things we didn't cover yet in any of you baiting and i go so any fish my recommendation is to use scent so this particular one is sturgeon cocktail you can use sand shrimp you can use other ones for sturgeon uh, but the idea is you can put a little bit of that liquid onto the bait itself or even on your hands because um, fish have smell and they can sense human smell. And you want to eliminate any possibility of them refusing your bait because it smells funky. It smells different. It smells like not something that they want to touch because they're not used to the smell. So use the scent sparingly, or no, I should say, use the scent um, in all your bait fishing applications. Next, let's talk about bite detection. Okay, so we talked about putting your rod out there in the rod holder or balance beam, whatever it is on the boat or on the bank. And I'm gonna cover specific tactics and tricks and tips, tips and tricks for both bank and uh, boat fishing in a few minutes. But first let's talk about bite detection. How does sturgeon bite? So they can approach your bait and start sucking it in, first testing and then sucking it in from the bottom. So the tip of the rod is gonna do this. That's bite, okay, that's bite. Sometimes if you have a bell hooked into this, you will hear the bell ring, but in a lot of times, it's so subtle, your bell won't even ring. So you have to pay attention, right? You have to kind of keep an eye on your rod um, in that rod holder doing this. Once it's doing this, the best practice isn't to yank your rod in attempt to send the hook, because sometimes you just yank it right out of the mouth. The best practice is to grab the rod from a holder, make sure it's a little tighter, and just start reeling. Like, reel up on them. That's the idea. It's not yank, it's reel. And then when you reel, that line goes straight, punctures their mouth, 
and now you have a fight on your hand. Next, I'm gonna talk you through the bait uh, fishing techniques from the bank. Okay, so where to fish? Well, anywhere on Napa River, uh, Sacramento River. Now, be mindful of closures. There are specific closures from January 1st through March 15th, I believe, on stretches of San Joaquin and Sacramento River. So you gotta keep in mind. Otherwise, if you are within the regulations, uh, sturgeon fishing is kind of like uh, a little bit of a lottery, but you could put it anywhere. It could be close to the bank, it could be in the middle of the channel, whatever it is, um, you find a spot where it's legal to fish, you set up a chair, set up a rod holder, you get the setup, you use the tips that I gave you earlier, and uh, you put your bait out there and you just sit around and enjoy your day, your book, your friends, your time, your beer, whatever. That's your bank fishing techniques. Um, I would change bait every 30 to 40 minutes, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, it just depends. But again, I would sandwich your bait, I'll put a bunch of different bait, um, almost like a <laughs> double-decker cheeseburger. I, you know, put some ghost shrimp, put some grass shrimp, um, tie them all together on the hook, I, you know, put a, I like to put a pile worm because it has this action that attracts attention, but your bank fishing is essentially a game of chance. You're going to put, a, put it out there, uh, give them opportunity to eat it, okay? As far as boat fishing, there's, it's a little bit more strategy on boat fishing. The way I do boat fishing is first I'm going to go just basically right around and find them, okay? I know some spots where they are holding sometimes. And so what I would do is I would take my boat quickly through those spots and meter. When I say meter, I mean go slow, eight miles, you know, uh, an hour or so or slower on the boat so my sonar I can catch and see what's underneath. Now, when I see, so, so first of all, sturgeon is like a cows, right? They graze. So there'll be uh, two or three or four of them. When I see more than one, I'm going to start paying attention. Okay, and you see them, they're big signatures on a sonar, so you know you can't make a mistake. They're, you know they're sturgeon. Um, what I'm looking for is when they're on uh, closer to the bottom, which means they're feeding. If they're in a midwater column or top water column, rolling, whatever, you see them rolling, it doesn't mean they're feeding. So they might be just cruising to their feeding spots. And so, so keep that in mind. Once you find them, once you find what you, you like, you, uh, you would uh, anchor up in that spot, make sure you can throw right to them, right? Toss your rod uh, or cast your rod and, and bait, just like you would for bank fishing. Put in a balance beam or put in a rod holder and just enjoy your time, your calm time before the storm, so to speak. If you get bit, it's gonna be super exciting. If you don't, I would probably advise to move within 40 minutes to about an hour and a half. Uh, in the same spot. If you're not getting any bites, I would anchor up, pull anchor, and continue going around the river, uh, sleuth, or whatever you're going, and looking for them before anchoring on the next spot. Okay, if you made it thus far, you have all the information, you should have all the information you need to go fishing for sturgeon. Now, one of the recommendations I have is consider hiring a guide for the first time. You'll learn so much. Uh, you can hit catchhappy.co uh, and, you know, send us a, a, a request and we'll match you with a really good sturgeon guide. Or you can just find a sturgeon guide anywhere, searching on Facebook and Google or anywhere else. So consider doing that. If you're not into that stuff, and that's okay because it could be expensive, um, just go out there and it's not that complicated, okay? If you bait your hook correctly, if you put it out in the waters where they can be, you have a good chance to catch fish. But just remember, you have to put in your time. It is really enjoyable fishing because it's relaxing. There's not a lot of doing unless you get bit. And when you get bit, then the doing comes in. Uh, but check us out at SweeneySports.com or I should say CatchHappy.co or swing by our shop at Sweeney Sports in Napa. We can get you completely outfitted. We can tell you where the uh, fishing spots are for sturgeon and give you the latest report and information on this fish. Thank you very much for watching Tight Lines.